what I saw, of course, in the different parts of Gaza, we drove through this visit, it was my fourth one, was extensive destruction, um, speaking to people and uh, hearing from them how they've been impacted, hearing of their loss, their trauma, um, and of course, also how they even managed to cope under the very, very dire, nearly dehumanizing conditions the majority of Gazans are living under. The focus of the mission this time was on the health conditions in Gaza, and I was accompanied by the WHO team. So we visit Nasser uh, Medical Complex, which had been on the inside totally rampaged, uh, th but the medical director was already planning how he could get the hospital one way or another up and running, at least in very modest forms. What we've done in the last months, we have established an integrated database, we've negotiated routes, the so-called Jordan route, uh, have been working with others on the maritime corridor, but of course also the uh, harnessing the importance of the Egyptian route via Rafah uh, to ensure that we have access points, that we see value in the additionality of the maritime corridor, and this is an important route. However, uh, I've said it many times before, it is not a substitute to the importance of uh, assistance and in future recovery and reconstruction goods reaching the Gaza Strip. It's all about land, land and land. And this is our ultimate focus. Deconfliction is a very sensitive uh, and complex process, but it needs very clear understandings, communication, uh, the respect, of course, for the role of the humanitarian workers and agreements on how this is operated. This aff affects convoys, it affects places of distribution, it affects very clear and very specific agreements that we have been negotiating with the Israeli authorities and in particular, of course, where the IDF has a key role to play. I think we have the duty of care, we have the responsibility and we owe it to the Palestinian civilian population in Gaza to think uh, to be working closely with the Palestinian Authority. Um, of course, we and the Secretary General has stated this on numerous occasions. We hope for their speedy return to Gaza so that the institutions can lead uh, on this process. The Palestinian Authority has a reform, has a, has a plan for Gaza. If it's possible, um, I think it's a very tall order. If you look at the extent of the damage, even just looking at rubble removal, uh, and the need to reconstruct housing as soon as possible, to get children back into school, at least places of learning, so we do not uh, inflict a generation uh, that has no access to schooling or proper education, particularly for Palestinians. This has always been their pride and joy. They learn, you can advance yourself. It's an important aspect of whom we are as human beings. I'm acutely aware, of course, that it's intrinsically tied to progress on the political front, the two-state solution, but we cannot ask civilians to wait. You know, lives goes on and people have suffered a lot. The healing of the soul is, 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 uh, is, uh, is intrinsically personal and I think it's very hard to even for us uh, on the safety of the outside okay. world to even start to comprehend what people have been going through. Children that are suddenly without a known living relative. Uh, children that have had to suffer amputations without anesthesia. Families that have lost their children, their homes, have been displaced multiple occasions within a very narrow strip. Um, but this too needs immediate attention. Recovery is not only physical, it is also support for the healing of the soul to somehow give trauma a space and a place. But if you ask today, the first ask, of course, of many Palestinians, I speak on my uh, field visits, give me dignity. And of course, this is a very, a very, it's very complex, but we need to start very practically, but never forgetting about the soul, human beings, and human dignity. This is equal for all of us, whomever we are, wherever we are.